So I'm gonna say 1017 and I'm just gonna plug that in and let the software do it. And that will then come out to my total of the 1817 uh, going back to the first page of the form 1040. Now I've got the itemized deductions at the 1817. The standard deduction is currently at the 12950. It's taking the greater of the two because I have my max formula here. So it's taking the 1817. Taxable income is now at the 81,983. So if I go back on over, page number one, we're at the 81,983. And then of course the software calculates the tax. I won't do the second half right here because I'm not really focused on that. Focus everything on that area. Right now. So there's that. So once, you, once you've cleared the hurdle, then of course you're saying okay now you're itemizing now it might be worth diving into the medical and dental expenses because you might get an actual benefit from it although it's kind of a double-edged sword with this one with your income going up because it's usually higher income individuals that are more likely to be taking the standard the itemized deduction instead of the standard deduction uh, but this one has a 7.5 floor on it <laughs> so they have to clear that before it even starts to add into their to their itemized deductions and the higher their income then the the bigger that floor is the hurdle that they have to clear so we'll talk more about that later but then you might say well it might be worthwhile for you to to add up all your medical expenses where it wouldn't have been if you were nowhere near itemizing and then it might be worthwhile to now add up all your charitable contributions right because now uh, you're getting a deduction for it so let's just put in a couple charitable contributions we'll say that we have four thousand charitable contributions let's say we'll just throw that number in there and so now we've got the four thousand now if we were nowhere near itemizing then you know that it's still good to give charity but but it wouldn't be pulling over uh into into here generally in that case so now it might be worthwhile like i said to go through more with a fine tooth comb uh which will go through some more of these sections after you've cleared the hurdle and you and you know they're going to be clearing the hurdle in order to itemize now my itemized deductions are currently at 2217 so if i change this to and let's let's bring that over here i added 4000 on my schedule a for charitable contributions do i have a charitable gifts to charity let's add a couple rows here let's add just a couple rows and i'll just say gifts charity i might list them out here or i might not so if i list them out i might want more more rows than this but i'm going to say total uh gifts to charity sum it up outside i added up the four thousand is what i want four thousand so that brings my total to the 22 seven now notice that I changed that number and that means that probably my state tax calculation is going to change. Well, maybe it didn't. 1017 brings us down to the 2217. So that's still good. Sometimes you got to keep an eye on that state tax though. Just saying it didn't change right there, but it could. Sometimes it does. So that brings us to the 2217, 77,983. So if I go over here, we've got then the 77,983. Now, if I, if I change everything the same here, but I just change to a married couple, they're no longer going to be taking the, the itemized deductions because if they're married, it goes all the way up from 12,950, the standard deduction to 25,900, which is then going to be higher than the itemized deductions here. So let's check that out. So now they're married. Mr. Anderson got married again. Yay. 100,000 so we're keeping the income the same now obviously that could result if you're married with a doubling of the income or an increase of the income but we're going to keep it the same everything the same at this time and now now that standard deduction jumped way up doubled to 25.9 which is now greater than what we had in the schedule a so it's a pretty large hurdle there you can see that's fairly significant uh to to try to clear that hurdle even with you know the more you got to be paying a pretty significant amount of interest on the mortgage and a pretty significant amount of taxes which you can easily clear if you're in a high cost of living uh, uh a state but if you're not then then you may not you may not clear that even with a even you know with a home 
because you might not need as big a loan or whatnot. So then, so there's that. Now, if I, if I mirrored that on this side, I'd say, okay, that would mean my standard deduction went up to married here, boom, 25, nine. And now I can see the 25, nine is greater than the itemized deductions that we, we, we calculated last time. So that means it's going to be taking the greater, the 25, nine, instead of the 22, 17. So that's the general, uh, the general idea. Now, remember that if, if you had people that were over 65, those standard deductions change and you'll typically pop on over here to the schedule 1040 SR. And you can look at those, those standard deductions on page four. But that's the general layout. So we're going to go through some of the itemized deductions now, category by category. So many categories. For the Schedule A, we'll look at each of these categories. But what you want to do in practice in your mind when you're dealing with someone is, is probably look at the prior year tax return, right? Did they itemize last year? Has anything significant changed from last year that means they're going to itemize this year, such as they bought a home? Uh, or they had like a catastrophe happen, like a medical catastrophe or something that was very uh, expensive because that's going to be the big thing that will lead you to see, are they going to be able to itemize or not? Is it worth my time to dig down on the itemized stuff? If they are itemizing, then of course you want to spend more time on each of these categories on the itemized components because it's more likely that you might be able to, to get a, to squeeze out a few more benefits once they've cleared uh, the hurdle. And also you always want to just keep in mind that if they have a home, you, you could ask that as a general question. Do you, do you own your home or do you rent? Well, if you own the home, then it's likely they have mortgage interest. We would expect to see mortgage interest and we would expect to see uh, property taxes, which are going to be the, the big ones that we would want to, that we would want to make sure we pick up. And then again, once we have those, then we go, then we want to drill in on all the other kind of on the other kind of stuff. So that means that when you're looking at this, you usually don't kind of look at it from top to bottom. You usually look at the schedule A and go interest. Let's look at that first. <laughs> and then taxes, property taxes in particular. And then you might go into the other items and kind of expand on it uh, from that point.